Hello everyone and welcome back. I am back working in Worlds of Wonder today and we are going to go ahead and work a little bit on this page. I'm in a Johanna Basford Facebook group and we're doing a bit of a colour along in there so we're all doing the same page. So this is my contribution to that. So I'm going to start out doing these little trees. There's one tree on either side. I'm just going to show the one. I'm doing both the exact same way. So you don't have to necessarily watch me do both. So I'll just show the one. So I'm using my Faber-Castell Polychromos for this one. And I'm starting out by putting down a layer of the um, earth green yellowish. And then I'm going to go ahead and darken things up and add in the shadows and everything after a little while. Now because this paper is really smooth, I find it's best to work with a really sharp tip. Now to save a bit of your pencil and not having to sharpen it all that often, if you every now and again just give the pencil a little twist so that you keep changing the the point where you well the where the point hits the paper, that's what I'm trying to say. Because um, it will give you a little bit of an edge um, and kind of a new point to um, to color with, and it will save your your pencils from over sharpening all the time. Now my plan with this tree is to try and go over with a few layers, darken it up and then I want to try out some odorless mineral spirits so that I can make even more layers on top. I just want to have a really sort of good go at testing it out on something that's a little bit bigger compared to last time I was using it. So I thought this tree will be a perfect item to test this out on. So let's see how we all go. And if you don't have it, don't worry about it. You can use a blender pencil or you can just keep going with the layers. I just thought I'd use the spirits just because this paper is really, really smooth. So it doesn't have a huge amount of tooth in it. So by using the spirits, I'm not going to risk flattening the tooth of the paper before I got down the amount of layers that I want to get down on the paper first. Thank you. 
just going to go over again with the earth green yellowish just so I can get enough pigment down on the paper before I use the um, odorless mineral spirit over the top. If not, I'm just going to end up mucking up the paper underneath. So for the blending, I'm just using a little Q-tip with a tiny bit of the odorless mineral spirits on it. I've just poured it into a little container and I've just got some glad wrap just sitting over it so it doesn't poison me because it can be this quite toxic. So just try not to breathe it in too much. Now, so the top of the tree needs to dry now for probably at least half an hour just to make sure it's not wet when I go over again. So I'm going to just go ahead and start on the trunk and the branches of the tree.
So as you can see, I'm doing exactly the same principle as I did with the canopy. I'm just going from light to dark and now I'm just going over with my lightest color again just to make sure I have enough pigment down on the paper. And then I'm going to go over with the odorless mineral spirits again and just blend it all out. So the tree canopy is all dry so I'm going to go in now with my mid color and just start adding some more layers. I'm really noticing the difference having used the mineral spirits on this. It's so much easier to get these layers down because I haven't done anything to damage the tooth or the paper. So I'm finding it much easier to lay down the color and I don't feel like I have to push hard or anything like that to get the color down on the paper.
So now that I've got my darker colours down, I'm going to go in with my lighter screen again and just blend it all out. The trunk of the tree is also dry so I'm going to go ahead and add some more layers of this using the same colours that I did before. I'm using the dark sapia to add in some darker shadows on these. I quite like it. It's not as harsh as a pure black, but I'll still get the get the job done.
starting to get quite happy with how this tree is turning out so I'm going to finish off this canopy and then we're going to get started on the houses now if you haven't colored the little tree on the right hand side you can go ahead and do that or if you've colored it alongside this one just keep going with me and start with the houses For these houses I'm sort of thinking of this colorful Mediterranean kind of style so I'm going to go ahead and pretty much use the colors all those bright colors that's down the bottom tray for those of you that have the full set of polychromos it's I call it the earthy tray so they got really nice bright colors but they're not they're, they're a little bit more earthy um, at the same time as they're nice and bright I just thought that they look really cool with that Mediterranean theme that I'm going with here Thank you. 
Now, when I got here, I realized that my camera had stopped recording. So what I did is I added in terracotta on the roof here and the bigger roof up the top there. Um, you will also see that those little arches by the door and windows there, um, I've added in um, the, I think it's is it red beige or beige red, <laughs> the really light one in the bottom tray, um, as well as a little bit of cinnamon around the edges just to darken up and shade it a little bit. For the windows, um, I've added in the, I think it's a Naples yellow. Now I thought I'd add a little bit more contrast for these arches so I'm just going to go in with the Van Dyke brown and just go very easily around the very sort of outline of it and just darken it just to give a little bit more contrast.
for the stone steps and the little stonework around them that big door just to my to my right there I'm just gonna start with the warm grey 2 as a base layer and then I'm gonna go a little bit darker just in the same range of colors and just shade it up a little bit and add some uh, some contrast and a little bit of depth So I'm going to use a little bit of dark sapia just for the darkest areas of the stonework. So I'm just underneath the tree here where I kind of feel it will be a bit darker and as well around the edges of the stones around the door.
As I mentioned earlier, my aim with these little buildings is to make them colourful and happy. So I'm going to go in with the dark Naples ochre for this one and just it just makes me happy I think. It just screams Mediterranean and some sort of Italian, <laughs> Italian coast or wine district or something like that. And isn't that what this book is for? Exploring wondrous worlds around
So I want to make one building a little bit darker. So I'm going to go in with this red violet. I reckon it will be absolutely perfect. It's still got those sort of warm, warm tones. It's not, doesn't have too much blue in it. And I think it's going to fit in beautifully with the rest of the colors. I'm going to go in and I'm going to blend the center with my white. I just don't want to make it any darker than it is. And I'd like to have, do the same like I did with the other ones and have it slightly darker in the middle. Opposite, have it slightly lighter in the middle. Don't listen to me.
I'll probably end up adding some more shading just um, on the edge of each, each step on these ones but it's getting quite dark where I'm sitting at the moment so I'm gonna just quickly try to finish off um, the building and the shading up the top and then I'm gonna start again tomorrow I think just when I got a little bit more when I got a little bit more light It is the next morning and I'm back again I've got plenty of daylight coming in through my window so it's not too dark and it should be perfect for filming so I'm just gonna start with these little tiles up the top I'm gonna go darker up the top of each tile and then fade into a lighter a lighter color down the bottom because I think that you know they being tiles or roof tiles that they'll overlap
Now for this dome roof, I want to go in and do like a gold, gold color. So I'm going to start out with my light. Now I've gone in with a cadmium yellow. I'm not a hundred percent sure if I'm happy with it. We'll see. <laughs> I might end up changing to the Naples, uh, one of the Naples colors instead. Now I am going to do this with all of those top roofs and uh, the little pointy ones that you see. So you can go ahead and do each of these steps on each of those roofs if you want to.
so I've got one layer down of each of the colors that I'm using now I'm just going to go ahead and just start playing with these colors and just darken it up in certain areas until I'm happy with with the result
so I'm gonna go ahead and do the other little tops. I'm gonna do this little spear thing at the top and then this little rooftop here as well. Exactly the same as I did, um, did with the other one that we just did. Now I want this little dome tower to be white but because we got a white paper <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna use my grace to um, to get that white feeling instead.
So I've been so unsure what to do with this bird. I've been wondering whether it's a real bird or if it's a decorative bird. So I've just decided I'm just gonna color it as if it was real. <laughs> and well, you do you. If you want this to be a decorative one, you could possibly even do it in the golden tones that we did with the, um, with the rooftops. And that should look really cool as well. Now I want this little front building here to be nice and bright and sunny and yellow. So I'm going to go in with my Naples yellow first as a base layer and then, then I'm going to go in and use my Ochus for, um, for the shading and the darker areas for that.
Now I was wondering what to do with the windows in my yellow buildings so I've just decided to go in very very lightly with my sky blue and I'm just going to go down in the corners really down the bottom and then just fade up until well nothing just to give the illusion that there's a bit of glass there and I'm going to do that on that other yellow building just to the left as well. Now for this little tower to the right, I thought I'd do something a little bit different. So I'm going to go in darker with the um, 
red violet down the bottom and then I'm going to go slightly lighter the higher up I come for each of those. You can see they, it's kind of divided into four segments so each of those is going to be a little bit lighter than the one below.
a little inner window part. I'm just going to use one shade darker um, than the color of that particular segment. So I'm kind of doing the color that I used underneath, if that makes sense.
Now, as I mentioned before, I'm going to make this little rooftop gold like I did with the other ones. So for the grass, I'm going to go ahead and use the same sort of base colors that I used for the bushes and the trees. So I'm going to start with the earth green yellowish and then I'm going to be using the permanent green olive, I think. I'm going to try to make it slightly lighter in front of those bigger doors just because I kind of think that maybe you know people have been walking there and the grass isn't as tall and lush there as it would be in the other sort of in between where people walk sort of alongside the uh, the walls and things so I'm going to go darker alongside the wall and lighter towards the center of the doors So for this little area between the top part and the bottom part of this picture, I'm just going to go ahead and do it in browns. So I'm starting with the Van Dyke brown and um, as a base layer and then I'm going to go a little bit darker in I think possibly with either a burnt umber or a walnut or both, we'll see. Um, and just I'm just doing it as if someone had cut away a part of the earth and that's what you've got to see.
these little plant thingies on the opposite side as well, so just go ahead and colour them in at the same time. And there we go! That is the top half of this picture. I hope you enjoyed either following along or just watching and I can't wait to do part two with you guys. So I wish you all a colourful day. I hope you look after yourselves and I will see you again next time.